It's too late. I spent too much time in the electronics channel and caught the power nut bug. The craving for perfect power waveforms is one of the classic symptoms of the power nut disease. Luckily for me, I have just the antidote, an unfinished capacitor charger project from the railgun era. The latest and final iteration of this charger is based on an LT3750 which I had been investigating for years. In this video, I would like to take a look at some of the more interesting details of how this clever IC works, why it is the perfect solution to the capacitor charging problem and some magnetics optimizations that can significantly reduce charge times for the same peak currents. It is a well-known fact that uncharged capacitors are basically a short circuit. This problem is made worse by the fact that capacitor chargers are based on transformers of some kind. The capacitor shorts out the secondary which in turn shorts the primary because of their tight coupling. But what if there was no transformer? Enter the boost converter. A simple inductor is charged up to a certain current and then discharged through a diode into the capacitor. This way, the magnetic element is uncoupled from the capacitor. Or so it may seem. On startup, the inductor current quickly jumps to a very high value which brings us back to square one. The reason for this behavior is the inductor itself, explained by this formula. The rate of current rise or fall through the inductor is proportional to the voltage across it. When the capacitor is uncharged, this voltage is basically a diode drop leading to a very slow current ramp down. You can also think about this in terms of an RL circuit, the lower the resistance, the larger the time constant. This circuit might be good enough, but we can go a little further. For example, the switching element sees the full output voltage across it during the inductor discharge cycle. Keeping the high voltages away from the low voltage side would also be nice, calling for galvanic isolation. The latter is achieved easily by splitting the inductor into two parts, a transformer. Now we are presented with an additional variable we can use to our advantage, turns ratio. If we increase the number of turns on the secondary, we can control the former. The reflected voltage on the primary is smaller. Redrawing this circuit leads us right to the classic flyback converter circuit. A packet of energy is stored in the primary and discharged into the secondary. Another unlimitation of this packet of energy system is that the output voltage does not depend on turns ratio. That does not get rid of the problem of an uncharged capacitor shorting the secondary. If we probe the secondary current and connect a voltage source to the secondary, we can see that the current ramp is proportional to the output voltage. An easy way out of this would be to measure current flow on the secondary side. This is easily accomplished using some kind of a shunt, but there is a more elegant way to do it. Probing the drain of the switching MOSFET, we can see that the reflected primary voltage exists only as long as there is a secondary current. There is also an additional bonus. The reflected voltage is equal to the output voltage divided by the turns ratio. This is where the LT3750 comes in. It takes advantage of both these properties, detecting secondary current flow and secondary voltage from the MOSFET drain. This way, it can compensate for secondary discharge time. Every MOSFET has some parasitic capacitance across the drain and source, and when the secondary discharge is complete, this capacitance and the primary inductance resonate. The LD3750 takes this in stride and starts the next switching cycle right as the secondary discharge ends. And at this point, the drain voltage is brought low because of the resonance. As the voltage on the output increases, this resonance grows stronger and will eventually go below ground. Since the MOSFET switches at this point, zero voltage switching is automatically achieved, increasing efficiency. The internal circuit diagram in the LT3750 datasheet gives us some clue as to how the output voltage detection works. Let's take a look at a simpler interpretation from the LT3484 datasheet. At its heart is a PNP transistor whose base is connected to the constant supply voltage and the emitter is connected through a resistor to the drain. This forms a basic current source which creates a current proportional to the reflected voltage that appears on the drain. This current is fed into a resistor to convert it to a voltage that is ground referenced which can easily be detected by a comparator. These waveforms also explain the capacitor across the RBG pin which gets rid of the leading edge spikes. There's also the pesky VB drop that has a significant tempo and reduces the accuracy of our readings. This is fixed using a matched diode connected transistor which is biased using a small current source. This brings us back to the circuit in the LD3750 datasheet. The discontinuous mode detection comparator is a mystery. Luckily, the datasheet of the LD3748, another flyback controller, provides some clues. The same current source trick is used but the DCM comparator threshold is set ever so slightly above the supply voltage, probably through another leg of the current mirror. That's enough theory, back to the bench. 
We have established that secondary discharge takes up a lot of the charging cycle, so reducing the secondary inductance and therefore turns ratio is the best solution. I have to somehow make a transformer with a smaller turns ratio and the most logical thing would be to take one of the existing coil craft DA2034 apart and take some turns of the secondary. Even with my heat gun maxed out, the epoxy refused to melt and I couldn't take the thing apart. It looks like the windings are interleaved which would make the disassembly difficult anyway so I had to abandon this route. I will be using 4 of the 22 microhenry variant from the MSD 1048 1-1 coupled inductor series. Primary is in parallel and secondary is in series to give a 1 is to 4 turns ratio with 5.5 microhenry primary and 88 microhenry secondary inductance. The 5.5 microhenry primary inductance is not a coincidence. The LD3750 has a minimum inductance limit that depends on the turns ratio. Of course, I completely forgot about this which is why I ended up with a whole bunch of samples from coil craft before getting the right value. Before we go any further, I did a few test runs of the original capacitor charger board to establish a baseline. In the stock configuration, the LD3750 DA2034 combo can charge a 1000 microfarad capacitor to 200 volts in 900 milliseconds. Running this whole configuration is a 555 bi stable and a weird rocker switch I had lying around. I also ended up using this old railgun board because it had a convenient fuse holder and connection points. Pushing the rocker switch to one side sets the LD3750 to charging mode. And for all the safety nuts out there, the other side activates the discharging relay which safely discharges the capacitor. Since we are here, we might as well do some probing for which I soldered on machine pin sockets to important nodes so I can use probes with a ground spring attached for best performance. You can clearly see how… Oh wait, that was too quick. Let me set the scope to normal mode and try again. Oops, EMF from the relay activated charging. There we go. The primary current peaks at the expected value exactly and the drain falls right down to zero before the next switching cycle as expected. You can also see how the current pulses on the primary are spread out in the beginning thanks to secondary discharge. In slow motion, the increasing drain voltage from the reflected secondary is also clearly seen. Triggering on the very last switching cycle shows how the drain rings right down to zero volts enabling ZVS. With that out of the way, it's time to start work on the modification. The DA2034 goes to be replaced by the infamous mod board. It's a good thing I decided to check the inductance using a relic from 2017 because the values are way off. The inductance of the individual inductors are within spec so this means there is something wrong with the PCB itself. Now, arts and crafts was not my best subject in school and the weird pinout of the inductors made it worse. Thank god I've been saving up pin tails from the beginning of time. The 5 minute crafting session seems to have worked, resulting in the expected primary and secondary inductances. I was able to verify the 1 is to 4 turns ratio using my function generator, but only at a particular frequency, probably because of the self resonant frequency of this mess determined by the inductance and stray capacitances. Stray inductances aside, this should do the trick. I had to replace the RV out resistor since the turns ratio is now changed. All the air wiring had a bigger effect than I expected but the chip still operates and to my pleasant surprise the charging time has reduced by 200 milliseconds to 3 fourths of the original 900 milliseconds. Encouraged by this result I went straight to Coilcraft and filled out their custom transformer worksheet for one with a 1 is to 3 turns ratio for even faster charging. They politely pointed me to a small selection of their products among which was the iFly 0012. I'm not even kidding this transformer is literally called iFly which might have something to do with the fact that it's meant for use with an intercell flyback controller IC. Thanks to some coilcraft magic, the samples reached me in no time. These transformers are much smaller than the DA2034s and will definitely not fit on the old boards, so I got Oshpark to make me some ultra compact ones. I'll admit that some corners were cut in this design but at least it's really small. Once again, testing saved the day. Turns out these transformers are 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 3 not 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 like I originally assumed and nowhere in the data sheet does it talk about turns ratio. I found it on the website after the fact. The Bosch needed to compensate turned out neat since I practiced it on another board. The next day I discovered that I had flipped the secondary polarity so I had to bodge and repopulate the third and last board. That was disappointingly slow. One and a half seconds which is twice as worse as the last test. Even with the ground spring, the current waveforms were terrible and I thought I found the problem till I realized that the probe was not in the 1x setting. Now it clearly looks like the transformer is saturating which is not a good sign. 
The data sheet was not very clear about saturation current as well, so I guess this is just a bad case of didn't read the data sheet properly. The 6 microhenry primary inductance was also dangerously below the minimum inductance requirements, which led to overcharging. But at least I proved that faster charge times are possible with some creative use of turns ratios. Now I'm left with a capacitor charger I don't have a use for. I guess the whole point of this video is to educate you about creative magnetics use, so you don't end up like this guy wanting to run a transformer at its rated frequency. The power nut flue is gone now and I can move on with life in peace. 